Well, our night health expert, Dr. Paul Coley, is with me now to weigh in on whether enough is being done. And the Broncos, uh, Dr. Coley, will be using what they call the cohort system, keeping the fans split into groups of about 120, little packs of four, socially distanced. Well, it looks like once they're seated, it shouldn't be a problem. Are there other risks, though, in going to the game? So, Tom, the cohort system is actually a great idea because it does two things. It limits contact between people to smaller pods, which then makes for easier contact tracing if there were to be an outbreak. But to your point, there is still absolutely risk to going to any gathering, particularly when the cases in the community are going up just like they have been going up recently in the last week for us here in Colorado. So what I picture in my head is really like the coronavirus cartoon dressed up in a Broncos jersey going to the game so you really want to think about it that way that of all the fans there some of them are going to be unwittingly infected with the coronavirus and the more cases we have in the community the more of those coronavirus fans are going to be attending the games and they're going to be sitting there for a long duration they're not only going to be generating droplets but they're also going to be generating aerosols which is almost like a smoke because it travels a lot farther well it'll be an interesting study to see how this plays out on sunday the team of course instituting as many measures as they can they will be requiring masks and they are trying to help with the social distancing what about individual measures that any fans can do to take over to cover their own self as far as reducing the risk Yes, really important to know. So if you're attending the game as a fan, one thing you can do is make sure your mask is on if you're cheering or shouting, because of course that contains those droplets. You also want to try to minimize eating and drinking, which I know is a big bummer because it's such an important part of games. But anytime you're eating, not only do you have your mask off, you're also generating those droplets because chewing generates more droplets. So you want to try to keep it to a minimum as much as possible. And then for, for certain individuals, particularly those that might be higher risk, or if you want to be extra cautious I would also consider wearing a face shield on top of your mask or when your mask is off because you're eating. We do know that Broncos head coach Vic Fangio was fined hundred thousand dollars one of five NFL coaches fined for not wearing a mask or not wearing it properly on the sideline during a game on Sunday. Uh, he said today he might consider that that clear face shield that Andy Reid the Kansas City Chiefs coach had been using so it might be something for fans to consider as well you're saying. It is absolutely. It's much easier to wear. It's easier to clean. You know, it's, it doesn't fog up your face, especially if you're wearing glasses or something like that. And studies such as the one done in the Journal of the American Medical Association have shown that it's actually quite good at protecting things from getting in. And it protects your eyes, your nose and your mouth, all the possible portals of entry. So this is about a third of how many people that the state uh, has said that they could put into Empower Field. I imagine the state the Broncos, many other municipal, municipal agencies are going to be looking at what happens this weekend to make decisions about the future and how this works out as well. Absolutely right, Tom. This is really a pilot experiment for what's going to happen. But because the numbers are going up as we're going into the game, I think it's going to be really important for us to keep a close eye on those numbers over the next couple of weeks. Uh, because remember, there's a time delay from the time of exposure to the time the people test positive. And for the individual fans going to the game, Tom, I might recommend a few pieces of advice as well. The first is to think about getting tested after you go to the game a few days later, just to make sure that you weren't inadvertently exposed. The second is to make sure to try to minimize contact with high-risk people after the game. And the third, of course, is to watch out for any symptoms. And if you do have symptoms, make sure you stay home. There's a lot of stuff to consider these days. Dr. Pa Coley, thanks for taking us through it.